conference with um, some quick comments from Dr. Metz and then we'll open it up to your questions and please include your questions in the chat. I'd ask everyone to take a moment to uh, mute your phone at this time and, and mute your, or excuse me, not mute your phone, mute, mute yourself. And then um, you can ask your questions in the chat. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tori Metz. She's an associate professor of obstetrics and gynecology at University of Utah Health and vice chair of research for obstetrics and gynecology at University of Utah Health. And we're here today to talk about a nationwide study published this morning in JAMA that found COVID-19 is linked to serious health complications during pregnancy. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Metz. Great, thanks so much. Um, did you want me just to start with a summary of the study? Yeah, just give us uh, just a quick, quick summary of the study and then we'll open it up to questions. Thanks, Dr. Metz. Okay, perfect. Um, so the study that was published this morning in JAMA was a study that was completed by the NICHD Maternal Fetal Medicine Units Network, which is a large research consortium across the United States. And what we examined is outcomes in pregnant individuals who had SARS-CoV-2 infection or in the immediate, uh, during pregnancy or in the immediate postpartum period, uh, and compared them to people who did not have SARS-CoV-2 infection during pregnancy or immediately postpartum. What we really focused on was a maternal morbidity and mortality. And so our primary outcome was looking at maternal death or serious complications from uh, common things that happen in pregnancy. So looking at uh, high blood pressure during pregnancy, postpartum hemorrhage, infections other than SARS-CoV-2, and seeing if those individuals who had SARS-CoV-2 in pregnancy really progressed to have serious complications from those obstetric complications. So meaning if somebody had a postpartum hemorrhage, did they then go on to need surgical intervention or radiologic treatment or other higher level interventions ultimately because that disease progressed to something that was more serious than we typically see? So um, Dr. Metz, you and I were talking before the press conference started. And so we, we've already known that there was a higher risk of complications for pregnant women um, who have COVID. This is linking them now to the risks of pregnancy. And you were telling me earlier, it's not just that it's linking to the, uh, to the common pregnancy risks, but more complications from those common risks. I, I didn't say it well, maybe you could say it better. Can you explain that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think that what we know from other studies is that pregnant people are at higher risk than non-pregnant people when they get SARS-CoV-2 infection. So we know that they're at higher risk for death. We know that they're at higher risk for ICU admission. I think what this study adds is that even when we look at things that are common in pregnancy, for example, developing high blood pressure, having other infections, having postpartum hemorrhage, that the people who have SARS-CoV-2 really are at increased risk of having those common complications progress to something more um, that can be life-threatening or really serious morbidity. And so the reason the study was so large was really to look for those less common pregnancy complications or the progression of these pregnancy complications to something very serious. And what we did see is that people who have SARS-CoV-2 are at higher risk. Um, now, the reason for that could be a number of, of different uh, pathways. Certainly, we know that SARS-CoV-2 itself can affect the placenta and could certainly put people at higher risk of developing more severe complications of preeclampsia or high blood pressure in pregnancy because their placenta is affected and that causes downstream consequences. Or it could be that people have SARS-CoV-2 delay coming into the hospital. This was a study that was designed early in the pandemic. And when we designed the study, we were concerned that perhaps patients would not come in as early when they have these common pregnancy complications or that there'd be delays in their care at the hospital because of um, you know, needing to put on personal protective equipment for healthcare providers. A lot of these uh, complications that we looked at are things that can evolve very rapidly in pregnancy. And so any sort of delay could certainly put people at higher risk. And we saw that among the patients who were testing positive for SARS-CoV-2. Thanks, Dr. Metz. And, and you're uh, welcome to uh, ask us, uh, ask Dr. Metz your questions via the chat. Um, first question is, why is this information important and how will it be used? 
Yeah, so we did see that overall, um, we saw this increased risk among patients who got SARS-CoV-2 in pregnancy. So I think we can say what we've been saying always is that, you know, certainly people should try to avoid getting SARS-CoV-2 in pregnancy or any time, really. Um, but this extends that, and we also looked at subgroups. We looked at, um, we divided this up by people who had moderate, severe, or critical COVID-19, um, and we also looked at people who had asymptomatic or mild COVID-19. And what we saw is that the majority of the risk of these complications was really among that group that had moderate uh, or worse COVID-19. And so, you know, we think about ways to prevent uh, people from progression to moderate or worse COVID-19. And certainly vaccination is the number one, um, but certainly other therapies as well that ha are available to people to prevent that progression to moderate or higher disease severity. Um, hopefully, if we could prevent that, we could also prevent some of these complications that we saw. Okay. And then uh, a question. The study was done early in the pandemic in 2020, as you said. What does it tell us for where we are in the pandemic now with boosters and Omicron variant? Yes, I think that, you know, even though the study was done in 2020, um, it does give us a look at how these complications progressed among patients who are pregnant in the pandemic. Now, certainly as we've had additional um, access to treatments, we've had additional access to vaccination. We hope that not as many patients are progressing to this, you know, higher disease severity of COVID-19. Um, nonetheless, we're still seeing a really low rate of vaccination among pregnant patients. And so, you know, we don't have the population overall taking advantage of um, these options that could potentially decrease their risk for disease, higher disease severity. So we would love to see that. I think this is more evidence to support that we really do want pregnant patients to be getting vaccinated. We really do want uh, pregnant patients to be getting treatments to prevent progression to higher disease severity. Okay. And anything in the research, research that shows a link between miscarriage or stillbirth? And if not this study, are you aware of any other studies about that link? Yeah, so the two um, findings that we did uh, have related to neonates are that we saw an increased risk of preterm birth, um, and we also saw an increased risk of neonatal ICU admission among the neonates that were born to uh, mothers that had SARS-CoV-2 infection compared with those who did not. Um, we did look at uh, perinatal death as one of our outcomes. Uh, but it's a very rare outcome, um, and so we did not see a difference in that particular outcome. We have certainly seen that in other studies. You know, there's C to C data demonstrating, especially during the Delta wave, um, that we saw an increased risk of stillbirth. In terms of miscarriage, um, the majority of the patients included in this study had uh, SARS-CoV-2 later in pregnancy, so most of them had it in the third trimester of pregnancy. And honestly, that was just a reflection of the study design and that we wanted all patients to be delivered so that we could see what their pregnancy outcome was by the end of uh, 2020. Um, so patients who had very early infections hadn't delivered yet. But it's certainly an area that uh, warrants further investigation. Okay, and can you talk to us a little bit about vaccination rates among pregnant women? Um, where do they stand right now? And, and how is it that... Um, doctors should be talking to their pregnant patients about vaccination, um, what should pregnant women be thinking about? Yeah, well, we know that the vaccination rates among pregnant people are much lower than the non-pregnant population. I do think that some patients continue to have hev hesitancy about getting vaccinated during pregnancy. I think that these data can provide another uh, talking point for healthcare workers who are speaking with their patients about vaccination and pregnancy. I certainly have patients who tell me that they don't want to get vaccinated because they're worried about risks, and then I can kind of speak with them about, you know, there are a number of risks of SARS-CoV-2, and what I'm worried about is that you'll get COVID-19, not that you'll get vaccinated. We really want you to be vaccinated. We know that vaccination is safe and effective, and we know that SARS-CoV-2 is dangerous in pregnancy. And I think that these data just provide another piece of that puzzle to really say that, you know, even when you get something that's relatively common in pregnancy, like high blood pressure, um, now we know that if you have SARS-CoV-2, that's more likely to progress to things like end organ damage or needing really acute treatment with IV medications to bring down your blood pressure to avoid stroke or actually having a stroke. 
Um, and so it's just another point to say, you know, we know that uh, SARS-CoV-2 is dangerous in pregnancy. We know that vaccination is safe in pregnancy. Um, and we really want you to do everything you can to avoid getting it and avoid getting severe disease if possible. Okay, and can you um, maybe restate what are the major uh, clinical implications of this study? I think the major clinical implications are that this we're, ta we're not talking about a small subset of the population here when we are talking about things like increased risk of ICU or increased risk of death. We're really talking about things that we see pretty commonly as obstetricians. Um, we have patients, you know, probably 10 to 20 percent of the population will have one of these pregnancy complications, um, meaning uh, having high blood pressure preeclampsia during the pregnancy, having postpartum hemorrhage, having some other infection um, during the pregnancy or around the time of delivery. And so this isn't a rare thing that we're talking about, but the complications that then those patients who have SARS-CoV-2 suffer are serious. Uh, you know, they really are requiring a lot of higher level care. They're requiring additional interventions to manage these complications of pregnancy. And we need to delve more into why that is. We don't have data about whether it's because patients presented later to care, whether it's because there were delays in the hospital um, getting care, um, whether it really is just the virus itself, and those are things that we'll need to look into for sure. Um, but I think clinically it's important for patients to know about these risks of serious morbidity or, or death from what are actually relatively common pregnancy complications. And uh, Dr. Metz, can you review some of the basics of the study? How many people were in the study? How many states were involved? Some of that yeah. information. Yep. So there were so there were a total of 17 U.S. hospitals that were included in this uh, study, and they would all be listed in the manuscript there. Um, but overall, there are about 14,000 pregnant individuals, or, preg or I'm sorry, 14,000 patients who are included in the study, um, and 2,300 of them had SARS-CoV-2 infections or had a positive SARS-CoV-2 test during the pregnancy and the remainder did not. And so it's a comparison between those who had SARS-CoV-2 um, to those who did not or who were uninfected during the pregnancy and looking at these outcomes, both maternal morbidity and mortality that we focused on, but also outcomes for the neonates um, in terms of the preterm birth and NICU admission. We also looked at the rate of positivity of um, SARS-CoV-2 positive tests for the neonate in the population, and that was right around 1%, which is consistent with other studies. Okay, and uh, how many people in the study had complications and were there any deaths? So in terms of the primary outcome, 13% um, thir of the um, group that had SARS-CoV-2 had that, and 9% of those who did not have SARS-CoV-2 had that complication. There were five maternal deaths. Those were all in the SARS-CoV-2 group. But we looked at all-cause maternal deaths, so we did not just look specifically at deaths that were attributed directly to SARS-CoV-2. We looked at any death um, because that is an important outcome. Okay, was there anything that surprised you? I think it was a little bit surprising to see that um, the patients who had SARS-CoV-2 were at higher risk of these serious complications from some pretty common pregnancy comorbidities. I think that we were hoping that in the U.S. health system that we would be able to mitigate any increased risk to these patients by, you know, having in place uh, mechanisms to make sure that their disease processes did not progress, that we could catch these things early and make sure that they did not advance to more severe, serious morbidity. Um, like I said, it's unclear why um, these patients did progress to more serious morbidity, and it could be a, one of a number of factors that we need to look into. But it is similar to what we're seeing in other non-pregnant populations. In other studies, we've seen things like uh, delayed time to intervention for things like myocardial infarction. Um, here we are seeing, you know, progression to more serious disease morbidity when we have common obstetric complications. Okay, do we have any other questions from reporters? Okay, here's one. Um, what, what things do we need to study? What, what needs additional study when it comes to uh, pregnancy and COVID? I know you, you just mentioned we need to understand a little bit more about is it the COVID or is it, you know, uh, hospitals being overcrowded? Um, 
do you want to expand on that a little bit more? What else needs to be studied here? Yeah, I think that certainly um, we need more study on trimester of pregnancy and how that affects outcomes. The majority of these patients were in late pregnancy, so it could really be having SARS-CoV-2 around the time of delivery that really increases these risks, and so be, that would be important to know. I think moving forward, it's going to be critical for studies to continue to evaluate by COVID-19 severity. So in our study, when we broke, uh, broke the cohort down by people who had moderate or higher severity versus those who had just an asymptomatic or mild infection, these risks that we were seeing were really limited to those people who had higher disease severity. And so I think that's going to be really important moving forward in terms of scientists looking at these questions and really breaking this down by disease severity. Um, certainly moving forward, there'll be, uh, it will be important to look at vaccination status and how uh, being vaccinated affects progression to these adverse obstetric outcomes. Um, those are all areas that certainly warrant further investigation. In addition, of course, you know, how this is going to affect these mothers and their offspring long term. So how do these risks around the time of delivery then translate into risks down the road? Uh, and certainly the NIH has, um, is funding studies related to long COVID. And I know that people are very interested in what this looks like over time for these unique populations. Is there, is there any sense that, um, that you have as a physician seeing patients that because it's been portrayed that Omicron is perhaps a, a little bit milder than the Delta variant was. Do you think that's impacting women's decisions not to get vaccinated? I'm sure it is. Everybody's decisions. Um, you know, we hear people say, well, should I just contract SARS-CoV-2 now that we have this, you know, more mild variant? And I think, you know, the answer to that continues to be no. You should try to avoid this uh, infection. We don't know well how the different vari variants are affecting the risks. Now, the majority of these data were collected even before Delta. Um, and so I think that, you know, that was a time when overall people felt like maybe those were not as severe of variants as Delta, and we were still seeing these effects that we saw um, in this manuscript. And so I think future work certainly could also look at the different variants, how those different variants specifically affect the pregnancy and the placenta um, to really get at this in more detail. Okay, do we have any other questions from reporters? Um, I'll wait, I'll, well, we'll wait to see. Uh, Dr. Metz, I'll, I'll just turn it over to you. Any other uh, final thoughts you wanna leave us with today? Um, I just think that, you know, the, the biggest, the, the most important thing about this study is really expanding what we knew about complications of pregnancy related to SARS-CoV-2 infection. I think it's really well established that pregnant people are at higher risk for ICU admission, death, mechanical ventilation. But this really looks at serious morbidity even beyond that, that are more related to the obstetric complications. So thinking a little bit less about the complications from the SARS-CoV-2 that we think about in non-pregnant pop populations and really drilling down on the obstetric complications and people experiencing really si significant and severe morbidity from those complications when they have SARS-CoV-2 infections. All right, uh, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, if you need a recording, please uh, contact myself or Kylie Metzger, let us know. Um, we have the press release posted and any other questions, please don't hesitate to follow up with us. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Metz, for sharing your research with us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.